To understand why Jesus had to die, we need to answer the question, who is God? Now, I can only do this very briefly in several minutes. We basically know God through his attributes. Our minds cannot discover who God is. God is so great and our minds are so finite. So God must reveal himself to us who he is. And he's done that in the Christian scriptures, the word of God, the Bible. Now, he's revealed himself through his attributes. Now, you've heard of the attributes of God, probably your pastor. You've heard someone on radio, TV who have spoken about it. For example, we would say, well, God is love. That's an attribute of God. God is truth. God is holy. God is righteous. God is all powerful. God is omnipotent, omniscient. Uh, God is pure. God is holy. These are all attributes of who God is. But here's the problem. And I noticed this in seminary and since then. When I went to seminary, I was a brand new Christian. So I was questioning everything. Do you know what I find of most people in the world? They believe you take all the different attributes of God and you add them together and the sum total equals God. That's not true. You see, most people think an attribute is a part of God. It's not. We say God is love. We don't mean a part of God is love. We say God is holy. We don't mean a part of God is holy. A part of God is truth. No. Uh, and you don't add all the attributes together in the sum total equal God. Then who is God? What is an attribute? This is what helped me. An attribute is a different glance of who God is in his basic nature. You say, what? Well, yeah. When we say love, we don't mean this part of God is love, but we mean that is what is true of God in his very nature. And therefore, each attribute is that which is true of God. So you can't add all the attributes up and say that equals God because each one is true of who God is in his very nature. And this brings up another issue. I remember in seminary, students used to sit around arguing, is there anything too big that God can't do? You ever had someone ask that? And I remember one, is there anything so big or something that God can't do? Can he build a stone so big that he can't move it? Aha, I bet you never thought about that, did you? Can God build a stone so big that he can't move it, but he's all powerful? Uh, with the attributes, it's a different glance of who God is. And I'll say there's many things God can't do. What? How can you limit God? When I debated the head of the Islamic Propagation Center in Africa, Dr. Ahmad Didat, I made the statement, the crowd just kind of exploded with it, and then immediately they calmed down when I gave the answer. I said, there's many things God can't do. No, no, no. I said, yes, God cannot perform. Now listen carefully. God cannot perform any reality inconsistent with his basic nature. In other words, God cannot act unlovingly. Why? Because God is love. He can't set aside one of his attributes and exercise the others. He can't exercise his holiness without exercising his love. He can't exercise his all-powerfulness without exercising his righteousness. And so God, you might say, in the way he has revealed himself in the word of God, he's limited by his very nature. He cannot perform any reality inconsistent with his basic nature. That's why there's many things that God cannot do. Any reality inconsistent with his basic nature.